योग वशिष्ठ बाय सेज वाल्मीकि बुक थ्री उत्पत्ति खंड इज बीइंग कंटिन्यूड रामा सेड हाउ कैन द स्पिरिट दैट इज कॉन्शियस ऑफ इट्स डीमेरिट फॉस्टर एनी डिजायर ऑफ इट्स फ्यूचर गुड एंड हाउ कैन इट प्रॉफिट बाय द पायस वर्क्स ऑफ अदर्स फॉर इट्स सेल्वेशन टेल मी टू वेदर द पायस एक्ट्स ऑफ अदर्स विच आर ऑफर्ड टू द मेन्स गो फॉर नथिंग एंड वेन्स द एबसेंस ऑफ फ्यूचर प्रॉस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द अनमेरिटोरियस घोस्ट और द बेनिवलेंट विशेस ऑफ अदर्स आर टू एफेक्ट आर टू टेक एफेक्ट वशिष्ठा सेड ए डिज़ायर इज नेचुरली रेज्ड इन वन एट इट्स प्रॉपर टाइम एंड प्लेस एंड बाई एप्लीकेशन ऑफ अप्रोप्रिएट एक्ट्स एंड मीन्स एंड द राइजिंग ऑफ द डिज़ायर अननेसेसरली ओवरकम्स इट्स एबसेंस ग्लॉस सो ए श्राद्ध डन इन प्रॉपर सेशन सीजन एंड मैनर सर्व्स टू द बेनिफिट ऑफ द डेजर्टलेस स्पिरिट The pious gifts made on behalf of the departed souls accrue to them as their own acts, and the sense which they thus acquire of their worthiness fills them with better hopes and desires of their future state. And as the stronger man gains the better of his adversary, so the later acts of piety drive away the former impiety. from the spirit therefore the constant practice of pious acts is strictly enjoined in the shastras rama said if the desire is raised at its proper time and place how then could it rise in the beginning when there was no time nor place you say that there are accessory causes which give rise to the desires but how could the will rise at first without any accessory cause whatever Vasishtha's replied It is true O long armed Rama that there was neither time nor place in the beginning when the spirit of god was without its will and there being no accessory cause there was not even the idea of the visible world nor was it created or brought into existence and it is so even now the phenomenal world has no existence and all that is visible is the manifestation of the divine intellect which is everlasting and imperishable this will i explain to you afterwards in a hundred different ways and it is my main purpose to do so but here may now tell you what appertains to the matter under consideration they having got in that house saw its inside beautifully decorated with chaplets of flowers as fresh as those of the spring season the inmates of the place were quietly employed in their duties and the corpse of the king was placed upon a bed of mandara and kunda flowers the sheet over the dead body was also shrewn over with wreaths of the same flowers and there were the auspicious pots of water placed by the bedside the doors of the rooms were closed and the windows were shut fast with their latchets the lamps cast a dim light on the whitewashed walls around and the corpse was lying as a man in sleep with the suppressed breathing of his mouth and nostrils there was the full bright moon shining with her delightsome luster and the beauty of the palace put to blush the paradise of indra it was as charming as the pericap of the lotus of brahma's birthplace and it was as silent as dumbness or a dummy itself and as beautiful as the fair moon in her fullness phenomena of dreaming vashishta continued they they beheld there the younger leela of viduratha who had arrived there after her demise and before the death of that king she was in her former habit and mode with the same body and the same tone and tenor of her mind she was also she was also as beautiful in all her features as in her former graceful form and figure when living she was the same in every part of her body of her body and wore the same apparel as before she had the very ornaments on her person with the difference that it was sitting quietly in the same place no, and not moving about as before she kept flapping her pretty fan over the corpse of the king and was gracing the ground below like the rising moon brightens the skies above she sat quiet reclining her moonlike face on the palm of her 
left hand and decorated with shining gems she appeared as a bed of flowers with newborn blossoms on it with the glances of her beautiful eyes she shed showers of flowers on all sides and the brightness of her person beamed with the beams of the ethereal moon she seemed to have approached to the lord of men like the goddess lakshmi appearing before the god vishnu and with the heaps of flowers before her she seemed as flora, flora or the vernal season in person her eyes were filled on the countenance of her husband as if she was pondering his future well-being and there was a melancholy like that of a waning moon spread over her face to think of his present woeful state they be, they beheld the damsel who however had no sight of them because their trust was in truth and saw everything clearly while her views being otherwise she could not discern their spiritual forms rama said you have said sir that the former leela had departed there in her revere and spiritual form by the favor of the goddess of wisdom how do you now describe her as having a body which i want to know how and whence it came to her vashishta replied what is this what is this body of leela rama it is no more than a false imagination of her gross spirit like that of a water in the mirage it is the spirit alone that fills the world and all it is the spirit alone that fills the world and all uh, bodies are creations of the fancy this spirit is the intellect of god and full of felicity in itself the same understanding which leela had of herself to her and accompanied her to her future state and the same notion of her body followed her there though it was reduced to dust as the ice is dissolved into water the spiritual bodies also are sometimes liable to fall into error and think themselves as corporeal bodies as we mistake a rope for the serpent the belief in the materiality of any body as composed of the earth and other elements is as false as it is to believe the hares to have horns on their heads who so thinks himself to have become a stag in his dream has no need of seeking another stag for comparing himself with an untruth appears as truth at one time and disappears at at another as the error of a snake in a rope vanishes upon the knowledge of its falsehood so the knowledge of the reality of all things in the minds of the unenlightened is dispersed upon conviction of their unreality in the minds of the enlightened but the ignorant that have a belief in the reality of this world of dreams believe also in the transmigration of the animal soul like the revolution of the globe on its own axis rama asked if the bodies of yogis be of a spiritual nature how is it that they are seen to walking seen to walk about in the sights of men vashishta replied the yogi may take upon himself various forms without the destruction of his former body as the human soul may deem itself transformed to a stage or any other being in a dream without undergoing any change in its spiritual essence his spiritual body is invisible to all though it may appear as visible to their sight it is like the particles of frost seen in sunbeams and as the appearance of a white spot in autumnal sky nobody can easily discern the features of a yogi's body nor are they discernible by other yogis they are as imperceptible as the features of a bird flying in the air it is from the error of judgment that men think some yogis to be dead and others to be living but their spiritual bodies are never subject to death or common sight the embodied soul is subject to errors from which the souls of yogis are free because their knowledge of truth has pursued the mistake of a snake in the rope 
from their soul what is this body and whence it is and what of its existence or destruction what is everlasting remains forever and is freed from the ignorance it had before rama said whether the embodied soul takes the spiritual form or is it something other than this tell me this and remove my doubt vashishta said i have told this repeatedly to you my good rama and how is it that you do not understand it yet that there exists only the spiritual body and the material form is nothing it is by habit of constant meditation that you must know your spiritual state and subdue your sense of corporeal corporeality and as you abstain from the later so you attain to the former state then there will be an end of your sense of gravity and the solidity of objects like the disappearance of the visions of a dreaming man when he comes to wake the body of a yogi becomes a light and subtle as the evanescent appearances in a dream and as a dreaming man feels the lightness of his body in his dreaming rambles so the yogi finds his solid body as volatile as air in all places the expectation of the long life of a master head in his material body is realized in the spiritual one after the corpse has been burnt away everybody must have to assume his spiritual frame afterwards but the yogi finds it in his lifetime by the enlightenment of his intellect as a man upon his waking from sleep remembers his having an intellectual form in his dreaming state so the yogi is conscious of his spiritual body in his own intellect the notion of the corporeal body is a mere fallacy like that of the snake in a rope hence nothing is lost by the loss of his body nor is anything gained by its protection and generation rama said now tell me sir what the inmates of the house thought this leela to be whether they viewed her as an embodied body or a bodiless apparition appearing before them vashishta said they took the sorrowful queen to be some friend of the king and to have come from some place they knew not what and where they did not like to examine the matter because it is the nature of the ignorant like that of brutes to believe what they see without investigation or consideration of its nature as a stone flung at random flies off from its mark so the ignorant flocks go astray from hitting at the true mark of a thing placed before them as we know not what comes of the objects of our dream and whether they are fled upon our waking such is the case with our material bodies which are as false and fleeting as our delusive dreams rama said tell me sir whether the hill we dream of is hid upon our waking kindly remove any doubt as the wind dis- disperses the autumn clouds vasishta said all things appearing in our dream or residing in our desire as the hill etc are absorbed in our consciousness whence they sprang just as the motion of bodies subdue, subsides in the air which gives the vibration as the motion of the air mixes with the fixed ether so the dreams and desires which we are conscious of set in the unchanging soul whence they have their rise our dreams like our knowledge of all our things are made known to us by our consciousness the nature of which is unknown to us as that of the in- inward soul we do not find our dreams and desires as distinct from our consciousness of them they appertain to it in the same manner as fluidity to water and motion to the air whatever difference may appear to exist between them is the effect of sheer ignorance and this gross ignorance is the feature of this world known as the phantom of fan- fancy as it is impossible to conceive two co-eternal and co-existent causes together so it is wrong to suppose the dream as a distinct existence or otherwise than an act of our consciousness there is no difference whatever between the dreams and waking states in dream we see a false city appearing 
to view so in waking you behold the unreal world standing as a reality before you nothing can be truly existent that appears as true in a dream this being always true of the visions in a dream it is likewise so of the external phenomena appearing to the sight of our day dreams as the hill in a dream immediately disappears into airy nothing so the material world sooner or later disappears into naught by thinking on its nihility a yogi is seen by some to mount in the air and by others as a dead body lying on the ground and this is according to one's belief in his spiritual or material body that every one sees him in his own way the view of the phenomenal world as distinct from the unity is as false as a sight in delusion or magical show or a dream or delirium of the great illusion maya others who are blinded by similar errors entertain as in a dream the notion of their reproduction after being awakened from the insensibility of their death like sleep but the spiritual body of the yogi shines and soars upward after passing over the mirage of the false appearance of the world to be continued om namah shivaya